Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to this week's episode of The Knife Guy. What are we talking about today? Um, so this is something that I have talked about before. A long time ago, but before, definitely. And I've mentioned it a few times here or there and uh, you know, different uploads. Um, the reason that I do that is because this channel is growing a lot. It has grown a ton since the last time I talked about this. Um, and uh, my channel in particular, I think, I've noticed this, that it seems to attract a lot of people who are new to the knife world in general. There's a lot of confusion and frustration. The first time you walk through the gates of the knife world, right? I remember. Um, it's even more confusing now, right? So uh, that's why sometimes I repeat some of this. Um, I still want to talk about this today, and that topic is availability. Are we owed consistent availability? The answer is no. <laughs> now, if you want to hear me ramble about it for 20 minutes, I'm going to do that, because that's what I do on the Knife Guys series. Um, but that's that's the short answer, is uh, no, we're not. Pricing? Fair pricing? Yeah, that's a different subject. That's not what I'm talking about today. But yes... Fair pricing, certainly. Now, you know, pricing, what's fair, and uh, that's kind of, that's difficult to kind of squish together and make it like, just acceptable for everybody, right? But availability, consistent availability, no, we are not owed that. That is not something that, if you, if you are a uh, knife world veteran, right? I've been in this world, like, really in the thick of it for about... 13 years. I got people watching right now who have been here for 30 or 50 years, right? They've seen incredible evolution. And I got people in here who have been in, in the knife world for just a couple of years. But the consistency between all of you who have been here for a bit, you understand, ah, this is not a point and click experience. This is not a, uh, I have the money, I want that, buy it, and I've got it. It's not always that simple. You guys know there's a process, especially with stuff that is rare, sought after, not mass, mass produced, right? You guys know. You've accepted it. Almost, no, not almost. Absolutely, uh, it, it's part of the excitement. It's part of the fun, right? Waiting, locking in on something and waiting, doing research, knowing where to be, right? To get that thing that you want. That's just part of the process. You know. New people... They don't know. A lot of people who are new to the knife world have come from some other, you know, like the knife world's here, then there's like a bunch of access doors. There's a bunch of stuff that could lead you to the knife world, right? A lot of that stuff, a lot of those other enthusiast territories or just general interest territories, right? It comes, those areas are like, oh yeah, cool. I'm now discovering this. I will go to whatever website and just buy it and have it shipped to my house, right? Um, that's, uh, that's a pretty common thing. We live in a world where it's like, I need some more whatever, right? Just order them. Need some more air filters. I mean, that's a bad example. <laughs> Nobody's, there's no enthusiast territory for air filters. Maybe there is. I just don't know about it, right? But a lot of other, uh, like hobby areas are like that. So people come to the knife world and they're like, oh, wow, cool. Well, first it's really hard to get around the whole, like, wait, knives get more expensive than, you know, 50 bucks, what? Yeah, and then they're ah, they're mad for a little bit, and then they realize, oh, apparently this is normal, all right, I guess I accept it, but I'm not gonna buy it though. God, but some of those are really cool. Okay, maybe just one. Yeah, all right, maybe I need another one because I want one to be nice and I wanna use one. Yeah, there's another one I like, yeah, it's double the price. You know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it. And then 15 to $20,000 later, <laughs> <laughs> you're in the same boat as all of us, right? But anyways, past the price thing, the availability part of it is the most frustrating to new people. The most common, the most common thing that I see in my comment section, and not just mine, literally everywhere, outside of the number one most common thing is, you can buy a gun for that. Like, that's the most common thing. The, the second most common thing that I see is, why don't they just make more, right? 
the gun thing, the gun comment is just stupid. That's just, that can, that's just dumb noise coming out of a dumb face hole. Um, but the question of availability is a fair one. Why isn't this available? Why don't they just make more? I want this. I have the money for it. Why can't I have it? Well, it's because it's not mass produced. It's one of those light bulb moment, moments. At least it was for me. When I, I you know, because I, I remember being, I keep saying this isn't about price and I keep giving examples for price. Oh, <laughs> that's the that's the problem with doing this type of stuff one take. Is whatever comes out of my mouth just comes out of my mouth. But yeah, it, it fits. Um, I remember being one, a, a person, uh, uh, you know, getting into this and just thinking like, there is no way it could possibly be worth that much, right? We've all thought that. We've all thought that. Um, and then it, it starts to slowly click. Wait a minute. This, this isn't so, so a lot of stuff that is manufactured in mass quantity, right? A lot of that stuff that I guess that's the reason. And then we've got other stuff that's made in small batch or sometimes one at a time or they're one-offs, right? There's more work that goes into it. There's more time, energy. A lot of times, the stuff that's made like that is of substantially higher quality, especially when we're comparing, right? I remember thinking the Gerber folding knives at Walmart were, wow, holy moly, those things must be super high quality. And then you handle, you know, something like this and uh, really turns your world upside down, right? Well, so, well, I want that, right? And then I, I realized, well, that, yeah, there's a lot of people who want it, right? These things are not being mass produced. They are much smaller companies or a lot of times it's a guy in a garage, right? Sometimes that guy in the garage is working with an OEM to produce hundreds, right? But there's still a capacity limit. There's a production limit because there's a... There's a workload limit, right? And then the demand, which oftentimes by the time certain people become aware, the demand is, has, is already through the roof. The hinderer thing. I remember the first, it's like I'm talking about, like, like old stories. I remember the first scarcity, the first wave of hinderer scarcity. But I do. I was there for it. Um, and I remember going, I want this. I want it so bad. Make it be available. As I, <laughs> I screamed at my computer <laughs> to no avail. Uh, and it, it, it's, you know, I wasn't owed that availability. They were simply, the demand was simply higher than Rick Hinder's output capabilities were, right? He could not make enough. And then they became available. Very, for a long time. I've said this many times. Very, very available. XM18s, XM24s, XM18, three and a half inches, like all of that. And there were Jurassics and there was Fire Texas, just everywhere. You guys remember going to DLT and you're like, I'm going to browse hinders today. They've got about 150 in stock. <laughs> so you just go through and pick it, right? You remember that? Yeah. And then they became scarce again. And I... Yeah, I probably had something to do with that. Shouting hinder knives, you know, from the mountaintops over the last four years. Um, but it's just one of those things where... And there, were, there were other elements, though. Other elements that slowed things down. I know what people yell when this topic is brought up. People like to yell, artificial scarcity, artificial scarcity. Um, in some situations... Sure, but this is much simpler. This is much simpler than that. I, I think people just love to make things really complicated and mysterious. Like, it's a puzzle and I'm going to figure it out. This is a secret code. I'm going to infiltrate the structure and bring up my tactical gear. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uncover the secret. It's not that crazy. It's not that <laughs> complex. It's very simple. Um, the demand is higher than the output capability. Right. And there are lots of factors keeping people from being able to produce these things. So if you're new to the knife, why do I have these specific knives out on the table today, by the way? We'll get them out. Uh, the Demco 8020 Titanium. 
the uh, Sharp by Design Production Mini Tempest KNP Edition, the Sharp by Design um, Production Evo Typhoon Damasteel. Um, we have the Vero uh, Isotope Integral, this particular one um, with the Timascus inlays. We have a uh, Microtech Shadow Scarab. We have a Hinder XM18 three and a half inch MEFP or Monkey Edge Frag Pattern Edition in CPM 3V Steel. We have the Hawk Deadlock Model C OTF and uh, the Hinderer XM24 Harpoon Spanto, the full titanium scale. Each of these knives is very rare, very, very difficult to get, uh, high demand, um, and because I know what people want to say. Uh, you're lecturing us, but you're a uh, YouTuber who has a reach that is so extensive. <laughs> and you probably got all that stuff for free, right? Everybody, everybody thinks that. <laughs> no, everything out here was paid for in full. And it was acquired fairly, the same way that everybody else does, right? Now, I'm not going to pretend like I don't get free stuff. Yeah, I do. I prefer to pay for things. I prefer to. This channel allows me to do that. Makes me feel good. Um, and, uh, you know, now that this channel essentially operates like a bit, it has to. Because I'm I'm generating ad revenue, right? I'm generating income. So this operates like a business, which means I get to do all the fun tax stuff at the end of the year. Any other YouTube creators who are generating ad revenue or affiliate revenue, yeah, it, it, that sucks. It really sucks to do, right? If you're a younger person and you're like, I want to be a YouTuber, you get to do all the taxes and stuff yourself. It's It sucks, right? But we, you know, got to do it. The free stuff, the stuff that comes in for free, it counts as income, which means I get to include, right? It's easier for me to just buy it. And it helps me develop relationships with people that I care about, like retailers and knife makers. And I, I want to support those people. I like to buy this stuff. It's fun to get free stuff, but I want to hunt things down and I want to, you know, feel like I deserved it. I want to go through the process, support the creator, buy it, and feel that good, you know, it's part of it. These were all purchased. These were all hunted down. <laughs> In some cases, it was just a waiting thing, right? A pre-order and then waiting, right? Sometimes the, uh, the purchases were opportunistic. The Demco 8020, that was right place, right time. And I was sweating <laughs> trying to buy that thing right? This was uh, in trade, right? But in, in trade with somebody that I uh, met, uh, traded something that I paid for. Um, same thing with the uh, Monkey Edge XM18. Believe it or not, I just sat there and waited and uh, got the email and then went in and bought it. XM24, that's a Knife Center exclusive. Bought that thing and then I waited eight years to actually find a freaking titanium scale for an XM24. Same with the Shadow Scarab. That was just sitting, actually, at... Uh, I think that was PVK Vegas. It was either Blade HQ or PVK Vegas. It was just sitting there. Paid for it. Um, all this stuff. Rare. Uh, demand is high. Availability is low. And I paid for it. Each one has a specific experience and story with it, right? And that's it's just one of those things. Um, the reason that I haven't purchased an XM18 3.5-inch... Uh, here recently is because I freaking can't get one. Nobody's going to hold one for me. Nobody's no special favors. Nobody's going to do that. I want to desperately buy not. I know people always reach after I say this, people always reach out via email. I don't want to, I don't want to buy a used one. I want to buy a brand new one from a retail and I got a specific, there's like two or three specifically that I would buy if they dropped, but I'm always late, right? Even when I do know when things are going to drop, I still miss them. <laughs> It's frustrating, but I'm well used to this experience. And I've way too, I mean, this, you know, this is a good, right here in and of itself, just what's on the camera is a good collection. But I've got a lot more knives that I've acquired over the last 13 years. I've acquired a lot more since I started, you know, creating YouTube content. But that's because, you know, channel revenue allows me to buy that stuff and then use it for content, which is, you know, why you're able to watch this video. But the point is, is um, none of this would be nearly as interesting. None of it would be nearly as fun if I could just 
Well, I don't think that one. Thanks. I know that that's what people expect, but that's not what this is. This part of the knife world. If you want to, you know, be able to just go to a retailer and buy something, you can do that, but not with certain things. You can do that with, you know, you want to you want to buy a, a Spyderco um, Dragonfly or uh, Spyderco uh, Delica. Yeah, you can pretty much get that wherever because they are mass produced, good quality. They are mass produced, um, and uh, the demand is much lower. You can do that. You want to buy a uh, Benchmade Bug Out? You can do that. Uh, you want to buy something from uh, Kershaw? You want to buy a Kershaw Blur? You can do that. The more expensive stuff, the stuff that is in everybody's face on YouTube and Instagram, it's very popular. It's not made the same way. <laughs> Rick Kinder cannot make as many XM24s as Spyderco can make, uh, you know, Delicas or Dragonflies. It's not possible. Not going to happen. It's not a situation where the makers are sitting around with their arms folded going, I'm not going to make them. They want them and I'm not going to make them. How does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense, right? Um, a lot, here's, sorry, this is my pocket today. Everybody's asking about the factor, the production factor from Winter Blade Co. So, he's a custom knife maker, right? Uh, and, uh, the customs that he makes in the United States, there, there's, once people figured out who he was and what he was doing, yeah, there was massive demand for it. Massive, massive, massive. So then people are like, you gotta, you gotta find a way to make more, right? Because people want these. Okay. Well, he's one guy, so he can't magically turn himself into Spyderco. I know what people want. New people... A lot of new people want this. They want some magic lamp and a genie to come out and go, okay, you need to make uh, 20,000 of these and they all need to be in the United States. Okay, great. I'll, I'll grant that wish. That's not going to happen. <laughs> How is he supposed to suddenly have the output capacity of Spyderco? Not going to happen. So what does he do? He reaches out to, I think it's Bestec. Yeah. I think this is made by Bestec, right? So, immediately some people are like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not going to buy it. Well, okay, fine. But there's, it, it's fine if you don't want to. It's, Brian Winter's not waiting around going, gosh, I sure hope every last person is okay. No, he's got it. He has a demand issue and he cannot produce enough. He cannot manufacture the quantities that this thing is being demanded in already. This is a prototype production knife and this I, there's already so many people want this. Not able to just snap his fingers and produce them. You know, so he reaches out to Bestec. And Bestec's going to do them. They're going to be expensive, right? That's one thing. They're, they're going to be. I think the, I think the price is going to end up being about 350 to 375 which personally I, I think is pretty fair. This is one of the most innovative things we have ever seen in the knife world, right? Um, whether or not that makes everybody happy, eh, they're going to they're gonna sell. Right, but just competitively with everything else that's out there right now, it's it's pretty pretty amazing. Um, they're gonna make them, but there's still it's not like best I can go. Okay, we'll just make twenty thousand of them, no problem. No, I, I I know that this this whole thing is kind of about this because there's so many people going. Oh, he probably won't make enough. I mean, yeah, like it's really cool and I'd like one, but good luck getting one because he's probably not gonna make enough. Well, no, there's no way. Yes, yes, this is going to be in high demand. Yes, you're going to have to be quick. You're going to have to be paying attention, right? You can't just sit around and roll over and, oh, look, there's the, the factors available. I'll just buy it. It's probably not going to be that way, right? For the people who are ready, it'll be like that, right? But if the thing releases and then you wait for two weeks, right, it's... We're not owed that convenience. We are not owed that level of availability. And that's something that, you know, I think a lot of people who are brand new to this, it's something that you have to understand. <laughs> we are still a small community. Yeah, there are millions of people here now, but we're still very small. And the people who are making these things that we love are not massive entities. 
even when they are working with massive entities, those massive entities, those OEMs, are working on hundreds of different products. Hundreds. <laughs> they don't, they can't just, the whole workforce cannot be altered to just make 20,000 of these so that individual people can roll around for two weeks and then maybe decide to buy one when the, well, I go home and buy one. If that, if, if low availability and high demand, you know, this is, this is knife enthusiast territory, right? No matter how you view these things, it's just a tool. It doesn't matter, whatever. It is what it is. This is, it's going to be low production, high demand. This is the world. You can't complain it away. You can't cry it away. You can't whine it away. This is where we are. <laughs> so stuff like the factor, the hinders, maybe someday the hinderer and the Demco, right? Maybe those will be mega ultra available. And I know it's like people are saying, it's so easy for you to preach about because you have this stuff. Well, yeah, it is, but I had to wait for it. <laughs> uh, I've had, I've owned multiple XM24s. As far as I know, Knife Center has only ever done one run of XM24 Harpoon Spantos. Will they do it again in the future? Probably. The Harpoon Spanto exists in other, right? It's in the XM18 3.5 inch, this regular production model. But the XM24 Harpoon Spanto is a Knife Center exclusive. And they have only done one run. So acquiring that was a, you had to be there to get it. You had to be ready. And then acquiring that XM24 titanium scale, the guy who helped me with that knows. <laughs> Those dropped on the Hinder website. Rick Hinder does not give me any special favors. And I was ready, but not quite ready in that moment. The only reason that I got that is because there was one guy who was also looking. He had heard me mention it on video and he messaged me on Instagram and said, hey, these just dropped. So I raced over there and bought it, right? That's just the kind of, sometimes you have to get lucky. In my case, you know, it was, I, I did get help from another person, right? But it wasn't like, that was given to me under the table before everybody else got it, right? Which, does, again, that does happen sometimes. This channel, I'm not going to try and hide that. This channel does, you know, I am sometimes able to acquire things before other people so that I, you know, can share it, bring awareness if it's something that I am interested in. But as many of you know, I tend to give that stuff away. This is, it's just, it's one of those, I, and, and it, I'm not preaching to people who have been here for a long time. Please, you know, those of you who watch Knife Guy regularly, most of you are people who have been in the knife world for a long time and you already know this. I'm talking to new people who are just so frustrated that they can't just walk over to a website and buy something that's really cool. But I have the money. I got 400 bucks right here. Why can't I buy an XM18? Because it's not available. And you're not owed that availability. They are trying already. to. It's not like they're going, well, gosh, the demand is higher than we thought. We've been sitting around twiddling our thumbs and not knowing what to do. And all of a sudden, uh, God didn't even know they wanted it. I guess I'll make more. No, they're uh, operating at maximum capacity, right? In the case of hinder knives, maximum capacity. <laughs> when they drop, it's almost they drop and are sold so fast, people don't even realize it. The amount of time that I have been trying to get another XM18, I've counted something like 13 or 14 different drops of hinder knives, probably in batches of 20 to 50. That's a lot of knives. And that's just what I've seen. There's, they've been, there are so many other retailers that I don't check. So it's not a situation where Rick Hinder is just not making them, right? No, they're being made in... The, as, as many as he can, right? Not mass produced, but still made in large quantities. Um, it's just one of those things where, and, and people say, well, I don't have social media. I don't, I don't do the Facebook and Instagram. Thing. I don't do that because blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. But in so many cases, that's pretty much the only way that you can have every notification angle covered, right? If you, in, in the case of... Um, like uh, hinder knives, oftentimes, because I'm a member of the, and you can do this too, you don't have to be a special person, the users and collectors group, the hinder users and collectors group on Facebook. Uh, I also follow 
tons of retailers on Instagram that carry hinder knives and will announce when a drop is coming, especially when they do an exclusive like DLT trading, right? That's how people know that. And then tracking when DLT releases things, right? Like the time of day, figuring out when certain retailers drop things or add things to their inventory, figuring that out, that's part of the process. I don't want to do that. It's too much work. Sorry. That's the way that it is. If you're willingly not, you know, participating in some of that stuff, right? Then no, you're you're not going to get it. You're not going it's it's just not going to be and and you're not you're not owed some magic rainbow bridge that takes you right, you know, the path of convenience. You're not owed that, right? Sometimes, you know, it's like you know when you take the guards down when you're bowling for the first time as a kid, you're like, this is fun. I hit the pins every time. It's so fun. And then you take the guards down and you're like, what the heck? The ball goes in the freaking gutter most of the time. Well, you got to figure out how to throw it straight. And even when you do, it's not going to knock the pins down every time, right? Unless you're really good, right? And that, that's some people do, right? Some people do get that good. But this is part of it. it the hunt is part of it. Low availability, high demand is part of it. That's the knife world. And when you finally get your hands on that thing you want, right? When you finally get it, it feels so good. Ugh. And you either, <laughs> it either is your last knife ever, but more often than not, it's just a gateway into something, into the next thing, right? So, well, that was another preachy episode. It didn't, uh, I didn't intend for it to be that preachy, but then again, I never do. So those of you who, have been here for a while and have been nodding along. Hope you understand where I'm coming from. If you're new, right? I hope I didn't demotivate you. It is worth it to hunt things down and acquire this. It's 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 fun. This is a great hobby. It's just, you know, we're not at the point where every single cool thing in our world can be acquired immediately or produced in a quantity that would allow people to acquire them immediately. It's just not where this world is at yet, right? Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Knife Guy. Um, if you did, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.